Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archived classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from the Govardhan Eco Village in beautiful Maharashtra, India, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host Raghunath and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kau Stupidas. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Monday's study of the Srimad Bhagavatam here at the GEV, Govardhan Eco Village, with a huge group of live, live, for our third annual Wisdom of the Sages, Wisdom of the Sages retreat. Okay. Wisdom training, right? Wisdom, wisdom, the sages, light, light on wisdom, wisdom training. Yeah, that's what we. It's got a few names. It's got a few names. Of things. Wisdom, <laughs> wisdom, light on wisdom. That's it. Wisdom, right. light on wisdom. We're here with a like an international group, different ages, genders, uh, countries. Welcome everybody. This is beautiful. How are you? Good. All good. Yeah. You got it together today. I'm zipped up. Look at me. I'm pretty good. From the belly up, I look normal. Then I got my paint shorts on underneath here. The belly up, you'll never know. <laughs> having a good day. I'm having a good day today. Very good. Yeah. Mara, you got any good announcements for us? Bring on Miss Mara. Don't knock over my well, mushroom. We have back to recovery group meetings today at 1, 2, and 9 p.m. Eastern time. And our SAGE group sign-ups start on January 27th. You want to be there if you want to get in a group because it's a free-for-all this time. It's... Yeah, it's going to be like Black Friday. Yeah, they are <laughs> 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 Oh, man, imagine <laughs> that. Yeah. Uh, People trying to get into Mara's group, you know. It's crazy. So I think before we should start the show, we should invite a couple people on the show. Right. I call it a Meet the Zoomers. That's what we can call it. Right. I was thinking about Jai's mom. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> you. <laughs> Maybe we should get Mulika up here too. Get them Jill. both. Okay, uh, listen. Get the it, grandparents. It, it's known historically that mother-in-laws do not like each other. Yeah. But these two are good friends. There we go. Come Look on, both. both. You're both coming up. Mulika. Mulika. Yeah, yeah, you're. You have to now. She's trying to give excuses, but no we're not excuses. buying them. Come on. <laughs> right behind right us. Right here. Right. You look, can you fit behind us? Oh, we should move up a little bit. Yeah, we're going to scratch her. Scratch her. Let's do this. There she is. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. This is that? our good friend, Jai Giri Dhari's mom. And she's here Hello, in India. Hello, everyone. Okay. What's your story? How did you get here in India, in Krishna consciousness? Uh, what's your story? What's my story? Well, it started with my son. He's the one that started, um, got into Krishna consciousness. Maybe it was a 15, 16 years ago now, I think. Mm. And um, he went on a little life journey and he called me and said, hey, mom, I'm going over to India. I'm going to be a monk. <laughs> so, um, And you were thinking? And I was thinking, oh, no, no grandbabies. <laughs> <laughs> But your desires got fulfilled in love. Yes, yes, yeah. You worship Krishna and get whatever you yes. want. Yes. <laughs> and coming from the Midwest, I had not re really heard of Hare Krishna or 
the devotees or ISKCON or anything. So I just you were from Michigan, right? Michigan. And from some way place north. way north, That's upper the peninsula. UP, it's called the UP. Yeah. Yes. And um, so I just started, you know, educating myself about it. And, you know, there's just nothing that's wrong about it or negative about it. And, <laughs> and you know, uh, just just being with him and and you know he's got such this energy and um it, it just drew me in and then just mm. you know getting further and further into learning about it and and being with him and then getting in with the family Mulaka and um, so then you heard he was going to get married to a beautiful girl yes Shaima and I'm that, so you glad. feel good at that point yes. yeah yeah then you heard about the baby was Baby's coming. coming. Yeah. So anyway, in the material world, mother-in-laws can't stand each other. <laughs> you guys are bosom friends. We live with each other, basically. <laughs> I think that might be the first time in the history of mother-in-laws. <laughs> so they brought in the mother-in-laws and the mother-in-laws take care of the kids. <laughs> that's what brought me here yeah. for the first time. This is my first time at GEV. And that's why we came to be babysitting the kids. But definitely want to come back and experience it in a little different way and India as well. So what do you, th what we do need to mention is both mother-in-laws listen to the show. Yeah. Although Muluka has been slipping a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> you don't listen every day anymore. Okay. <laughs> she's, she's back on, back. she's, she's back, back on the wagon. Thank you. Okay. But, but you're an everyday. What got, what got, other. what got you into the show, the podcast? You, oh. Kastuba. Oh, okay. Well, from the Bhakti Center, from the Bhakti okay, Center, yeah. yeah. From the Bhakti Center, and then I just found out you were doing this, and it's just my ritual to just get up every morning, the next morning, and mm. listen to it while I'm, before I go walk my dogs. And What are you doing when you're listening to the show? Getting a little mm -hmm. cup of tea? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Taking little notes here and there. and uh, Take her. Yeah, so I, 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 uh, my respect to all the note takers out there. Many people listen to Wisdom yeah, Sage, they're note avid takers. note takers. Yeah, so I'm very, very happy to be here. Blessed to be live with you guys. Oh, great, and J see everybody. I couldn't believe it, but you know, Jai stopped us on the street one day. Me and Mara were in New York, and he's, she's like, I want you to know, my mom listens all the time. <laughs> And I want to get them some scarves from the <laughs> Shravadam <laughs> scarf collection. <laughs> and we have one. Yes, we have them. Thank you, Mar Mara. <laughs> so that's my story. Anyway, thank you, okay. Jill. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. For good mother. Time. Good mother. Good grandmother. All right, Bo. Hey, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who else we got to come on down? I'm not going to put person. anybody on the spot. Alex, come on down. <laughs> come on down. <laughs> come on up. Come on up. Alex on up. is a good story. Alex has a good Oh, good. I didn't even know. I just well, no, she's just a good Alex. person. She's a good person. You're, are, you're a good person, I've heard, from Kastuba. I'm down here. Hi. Alex, what's your story? You got to talk right into the microphone. Um. Hello, everyone. I I'm an other. I started listening to Wisdom of the Sages podcast um, last October of 2022. Um, I come from, um, my parents were atheists and kind of condemned um, uh, different forms of religion. I am originally from Uzbekistan, former uh, Soviet Union satellite state. And I discovered yoga um, the first time when I was independent going to the university in the United States. Mm -hmm. And what first appealed to me was the asana practice. But eventually I got to a point in my life, I was already curious about deepening and the research in yoga philosophy and um, why uh, all of the things that I was doing were, um, I was just feeling better, more empowered. And then I came to a point where um, just a really low point in my life where I realized um, I was filling my um, God-shaped hole with a lot of material things with um, certain. You called it a festering God-shaped hole. Already. Festering. It, it, was, it took so long to realize like it was aching, it was festering. Um, and it, I got to this realization and 
just by uh, fortune, um, Wisdom of the Sages podcast fell into my lap as I was researching. And um, how exactly? Uh, I actually, it was in a, in a Reddit post, break, giving a list of different yoga podcasts, and I listened to a few, but until I listened to that very first episode, I didn't have that realization to want to continue deepening um, specifically in uh, Bhakti, Bhakti mm. lineage. Yeah. So... <laughs> Since, uh, and yeah, I've just been listening and I immediately, when uh, Govardhan Eco Village uh, was mentioned, uh, it was already in the back of my mind that I wanted to come here. And there was a yogi that I was following way before, um, like for years, uh, Sarah Ticha. I don't know if I'm yeah. pronouncing it. She, she was here last year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I actually reached out to her because when I was thinking about it, I saw that she was here for the long training. And I reached out to her and I said, hey, I was just looking at classes here. How do you like it? And she was kind enough to reach out and um, tell me about her experience. So say, thank you so much, Sarah, if you're listening to this. Um, so that synchronicity gave me another uh, reassurance that I'm on the right path. Nice. Yeah. Wow, okay. you sent me a, ni a really nice uh, Instagram message one time. And I was like, oh, wow, what a nice person. And then you walked in today. I was like, there she is. Nice. Uh, I also felt that was like that was another sign when I saw your post and I liked it and I, that you saw my message and that we connected on Instagram. So thank you. Yeah. Very happy you're here. Yeah, thank you guys you changed my life. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Good story. All right. All right. I say we have regular meet the Zoomers while we're here. We like that kind of. You like I like it. Thing. You know why? I think it gives a personalism to the show that I think. It's good to get to know people. Okay. It's good for our community to get to know them. And then they meet each other somewhere. I know you from the, you know, we do these retreats at Super Soul. It's like, oh, my God, you are whomever, Jimmy James or something like that. Yeah. You know, so it's it's nice. OK. What do you think? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. It's questions. How do they? What do they think of it? <laughs> are we doing are we doing Q&A today? Or are we doing the we back in the Bhagavatam? We're back in the Bhagavatam. OK. Um, but uh, we do have a nugget. You want to get into it? Yeah, I didn't see it. Did you send me it? Maybe I didn't even send it. You didn't send me the nugget? I'm nuggetless. No, I think I did send it. Sometimes I load it up and then I never hit, like, I never send. hit it. Oh, okay. we have a very sad announcement. Oh, yeah. One of our favorite characters characters on Seinfeld has passed away yesterday. Peter Crazy Grumby. Joe Davola, who we Joe talk Davola. about on a regular basis. Yes, we have. We been. say that everybody's got a crazy Joe Davola in their life. That means there's somebody in their life that might be a little crazy. And that may kill you sometimes. It hates them that, that for, no reason. Them for no good reason. <laughs> yeah. so, and we always talk about him. And then I got this Instagram thing yeah. that says, Crazy Joe Davola died. Peter Crombie. You know, Peter I Crombie. think I might have met him. Really? When I lived in L.A. Yeah. Yeah. I think I might even went up to him. I was like, are you Crazy Joe Davola? <laughs> dead serious. Well, our best wishes to Crazy Joe Davola. Yeah. Be great for his. A lot of people are connected in a lot of ways. You know, you never realize i'm sure it was spiritually connected maybe he was spiritually connected it's possible yeah. i mean he's definitely spiritually connected in one sense why because everyone is oh <laughs> no, not everybody is Some no 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 is connected but well but ultimately we're connected we just don't oh, realize yeah, we're connected, yeah that's right? it that's the that's the yoga system here we're all connected we just forgot that we're connected yeah all right you want to hear about someone that was connected yeah theodora of Alexandria. Theodora. I like, is that a woman's name? Theodora? Yes, Theodora. Theodora Although, is the male name, Theodora. Well, Theodora of Alexandria actually went undercover as a male for like a large portion of her life. She was a male impersonator? She was a male that... impersonator. And um, she went as Theodore. So, did she... Want to hear the story? No, really? I'm not going there. Just, yes, go. Would you want... I could tell you the whole long story. I, I could. Wanna... You don't. No, I just It's wanna... a great story. Okay, what? You really want to get into it? We can. You just asked me. I said no. Yeah. Well, you're going. You're, you're going back. Said, yes. <laughs> like you sure you want to? You're gonna blame this one on me. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a bit long, but I mean, we can spend some time with it if you want to. I don't. Okay. All right. All right. Then but, let's just let's give you the short version. She she was a she was a saint. She was a saint. Yeah. Saint Theodora of Alexandria. Theodora of Alexandria. Saint Theodora. She was called. She's what some people refer to as a desert mother. The desert mother. A desert mother. A desert mother. Uh, in order to perform penance for adultery, she disguised herself as a man 
and then she joined the monastery. With men? Yes. They all thought she was a man? They all thought she was a man. What about... What because she was afraid that her husband would find her if she went to a nunnery. Oh. So she went into the monastery. monastery. Yeah. That is fa uh, that's a fascinating you see? story. You see, now I got you going. Fascinating story. There's like, more to it. You want to be found out? Uh, I mean, I knew all the brahmach. When I was a brahmachari, I would know if you were a woman. They only, you they know are, what I mean? <laughs> well, you don't know for sure. You would know. There may have been women in there that you didn't even know. <laughs> now I think. What if you're bathing? <laughs> Everyone's walking around in gumptious. It probably wasn't like that, obviously. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> okay, so so know. nobody knew. They only found out when she died. As a matter of fact, she she once like was a life of anxiety. The the head of the monastery, not for her. It was the other way was anxiety. This was like relief for her, yeah. and she was asked to go travel to some other city to purchase some things on behalf of the monastery. So the the head of the monastery sent her, and they said, you know, there's another monastery on the way. If you you know if you if it's nighttime or whatever, you can right. stay there. So, she stayed there, and the head of that monastery's daughter tried to just to seduce her, thinking she was a him. It's getting crazier. Yeah, that's what I'm telling. I knew you were gonna like this story. <laughs> so she refused, but that daughter got impregnated by somebody else and, and, blamed, and him. blamed him, her, him, her, Theodore. And then when Theodore got back to the original monastery, she was being accused of this, of of, of doing this. And then she must have been like, "Oh yeah." No, <laughs> no, she didn't do that. Prove your innocence. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so she she just first at first because she was so devout when she when they when they let her into the monastery first, everyone was so impressed. Like she was just she was really the whole story of how she got was she devout or just hiding from her husband? No, she was extremely devout and she was really repentant. She actually got okay. pulled into that adultery. It was a whole story about that. Okay. She resisted it for a very long time, and then she got tricked. Yeah, and they always blame the woman. Yeah, well, right? in this case, they did. So, so she was very repentant, and when she got into that monastery, she's just in constant deep prayer. All the all the monks are very impressed, yeah. including the head of the monastery. So, when she was first accused, the head of the monastery she said, "I don't believe that. You know, Theodore is such a saintly monk." But then it got turned around, and even that guy didn't believe. And then they kicked, her. and then they came back with the child, gave her the child, and said, "You have to take care of it now." And they kicked them both out of the monastery. She left with the child. She left with she the child. Left with the child. Yes. And then she was living as a hermit, raising the child. But the, like all the local people began to realize what a saint this was. Did they still think it was a man? They all thought it was. No one discovered her no until one she discovered died. Her until she died. And they were like, holy cow. And then, and then all the local people went back to the monastery after like seven years or something like that, and said, "You gotta let Theodore back in. He's such a great, great right. saint." And then they let him back in, and he gave. She, she gave wonderful instructions. Yeah. Is it movie or something? Now I'm very, very interested. You see, I knew you were going to be interested in the long run. Why don't I just read you the instructions that Theodore gave to uh, Theodore. his or her, her Where's child? Alexandria? In, uh, it's in Egypt. Egypt. Let me see what I'm finding. Before her death, St. Theodore shut herself in her cell with a child and instructed him to love God above all things. How old is the child? I guess maybe I don't know maybe ten something like that. Okay, I'm not sure. Before death, I, I think when I said shut her in her in a, her cell, I think that just means like in a room. I'm not sure. Um, this, so these are the instructions: love God above all things. Mm. She told him to obey the igumen. That's like the head of the monastery, and the brethren, to preserve tranquility, to be meek and without malice. Mm. Right? No, hold no malice in your heart for anyone. It's like the six pillars of <laughs> <That's here. right. laughs> to avoid obscenity and silliness. <laughs> obscenity, <laughs> silliness. I'm okay with obscenity. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm a little silly. Okay. <laughs> to avoid obscenity and silliness. To love non covetousness. To love non covetousness. To love detachment. Detachment. Yeah. I don't want to. And to not neglect their communal prayer. Mm -hmm. After this, she prayed, and for the last time, she asked the Lord to forgive her sins. The child also prayed together with her. I think she may have been dying of cancer. Mm. Um, soon, the words of prayer faded from her lips, 
from the lips of the ascetic, and she peacefully departed to a better world. Nice. St. Theodore. Saint Theodore, 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 Theodore. All right, now Saint I really Theodore. want to hear what, now I'm very eager to hear the, the words of wisdom okay. in the form of a nugget. Hit it. Right there. There it is for you. And this is good. We could talk a long time just on this nugget. How do you live as a spiritual person in the midst of a decadent society? Mm? It's a big question. It's on everyone's. It's on everyone's. Everyone's that's that's out there. Yeah, at the workplace. Alex was kind of talking about this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, young Ryan was saying that too. Ryan, Ryan was Ryan similar. Was saying that Mara was in the midst of her catering, catering, catering world, catering, catering world. Okay, so that's food industry, working in a bar, the workplace, any it, industry. Yeah, practically yeah, people are obscene, uh, touching you, silly, silly, obscene <laughs> and silly, touching you, touching. Yeah, people touch you yeah, yeah, sometimes yeah. at work. Okay, go ahead. Let's keep this going. How do you live as a spiritual person in the midst of a decadent society? Have your heart always turned towards the divine? Oh. Have your heart, this is the instruction, have your heart always turn towards the divine, find pleasure in him, and not in all that is present and distracting before you. It is not exterior silence that makes you, that makes a monk. It's not exterior silence. That makes a monk. But silence of the heart. Mm. It's keeping that mind, that the eye and the prize. Yeah. Eye and the prize. You know, I like the analogy of the mother cow is eating the grass, chomping away, but it's always got like a third eye watching the the calf. Okay. You know, even though it's eating the grass, right? It's just like, you know, in New York, when I raise my kids in New York City when they're really little, you know, you go to the park, small parks, you just really, they're containers, you know, but, and the parents are talking, the kids are just running around being kids. And even though the parents are talking, every, especially New York parents, every New York parent's got their eye on that kid, even though they're not even looking at the kid. They're just like keeping an eye. That's because you never know. There's always like a creepy guy looking out. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like when you were trying to get Elvis Costello to acknowledge you, you had one eye on your kids. Yeah. You remember the story? Yeah. Yes, I do. I was in the park with Elvis Costello. I met a lot of people in that park. That's where I met the guy from uh, Wolverine in that park. Who's that? Who's the guy from Wolverine? Hugh Jackman. Oh, I met Hugh Jackman at the Bucky Center. You're kidding. Yeah. I Brought that up. <laughs> my, I didn't know it was, it was Hugh Jackman. I didn't know who Hugh Jackman was. No, he came to the Bucky Center with his wife and another kidding. person. They were really nice. He gave, took a bug of. I talked to him for like an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, we were bro broing down. But I didn't Elvis even know Costello who he was. wouldn't give you the time of no, day. Elvis Costello wouldn't budge. Maybe it's a bad like, day. He might have. He might have had a bad day. Yeah. I don't want to judge from like. You know, yeah, that's what I'm you saying. know. He also, people are very famous. It's like. They suffer me from anxiety because it's yeah. sort of like they don't know people. Some people are like, hey, I love you. Some people are like, hey, normal. And some people are like, I'm going to kill you. You know, <laughs> crazy fine. Joe Dabola. Yeah, there's crazy <laughs> people out there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. All right. So back to the thing. You know, I thought this was a very, very useful instruction. Uh, can I tell you a crazy story? Does that have anything <laughs> to do with the nugget? Story. <laughs> True story. <laughs> so I had. Uh, before I was married, I had a, a girlfriend that was had blonde hair, and we were invited um, to what was that television show in California? There were was quite a few. <laughs> I think Letterman? all of them. Was it Letterman or something? It was Letterman in California? No, Letterman's in New York. What's the one that's in California? Jay Leno. Jay Leno. We were invited to Jay Leno. I think it was Jay Leno. It was one of those. Okay. Jay Leno and No Doubt was performing on Jay Leno. So you were friends with them. I was friends with No Doubt. So we went backstage to see them. And then sort of like as a joke, and I, I was with like two other guys, and as a joke, I just started, my girlfriend looked nothing like Gwen Stefani at all, except she had blonde hair. And so I was just pretending, okay, let her throw, let Miss Stefani throw right now. Let's, and I was pretending like I was like, like I had a suit on anyway, because I was sort of dressed up for it. So I was just pretending it was her. This could go real bad. We had so many people following us. And then we jumped in the car. The car was a convertible. Jumped in the car. We started driving away. I had cars of people <laughs> following us. Huh. And it was like, it was so obvious it wasn't Gwen Stefani. But I I played the thing of like sort of a uh, bodyguard. Uh -huh. Okay, Miss Stefani, bring, bring her forward, bring her forward. Someone bring up the And it was just talking <laughs> into my cuff. cuff. <laughs> Take the shot. Take the shot now. <laughs> 
So yeah, you get crazy. They followed us all the way to Culver City. Insane. Yeah, from San Fernando Valley. So I'm just saying there are crazies out there. There, there are, are ex- psycho fans just, out there. Just, just um, forgive Elvis Costello and let's move on. I'm for, I forgave him. I forgive. I let it go quick. All right. Back to this nugget. Yes. I think it's really useful. It, it's kind of like she doesn't say get out of that situation. You know, yeah. she doesn't say, oh, you need to get out of the decadent society. You need to remove yourself from it. She's recognizing that you may have to operate in it. But this the way that she phrases it, I think, is important because the fact is we may engage with in circumstances that we don't want to engage in, and we may have to do it a lot. But it's not so much the engagement. Mm. It's where our heart goes, mm. right? Like when we say heart, we kind of mean mind, right? The, but but it means that part of the mind that has to do with your deepest desires or what you hold dearest. Right. And so even though you're moving through that world, you're what you're, what you're guarding is your heart. Right? You have to guard that heart. For a bhakti yogi, they have to guard that heart. They have to, because it's my heart is meant for Krishna, right? I'm not giving it here or there. And even we give it in all kinds of ways. Giving the heart doesn't just mean like, okay, we run off with someone or something like that, right? But it's like kind of like, oh, I desire that, or I desire sure. that person, or I desire that fame. or It's, I, it's almost you know? more, sometimes we say, and we recommend, hey, you know what? That workplace, you got to get out of there. It's bad. It can it's, be like that. But, but sometimes you get extra benefit for being in the midst of it. And guarding but creating a, a special, you know, a snow globe. You know what a snow globe is in Bombay? No, you don't. <laughs> you know what a snow globe is. What? Is you tell me. Give the mic. Bob, make girl. Come here. <laughs> so it's like this oval round thing. Mm-hmm. And it can like have like reindeer or some Christmas thing inside yeah. of it. You turn it upside down. There's snow. And there's like maybe water. Have you ever snow. seen snow in your life? She's never no, seen okay. snow. Okay. Okay. From a distance. <laughs> From a distance. What's that mean? Through a television Through a screen? Television. <laughs> no, on the top of the mountains. You've seen it on top of the mountains. Acha, okay. You've seen the Himalayas. Okay. Mm. Okay. So yeah, it's a, you gotta keep a little snow globe around you. And then you're sort of in it, but not of it. Yeah. And if you can pull that off, and a lot of our viewers out there, it's not like we they necessarily live around a particular temple or an ashram or a community. Sometimes their community is just wisdom of the sages. You know, live from Super Soul Farm, etc. That's their community. So they become expert at developing what we're talking about. They're not Snuggle giving up. out their heart to those engaged in com- complete sense gratification. They're reserving some personal integrity. I will say, it may not be as fun as having a whole community dancing and singing together, but it gives you special strength, I think, when you can sort of create that um, protective shield, force field. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and you and and even if you're not in the most particular decadent circumstances, I still think we need to think this way because it's it, it's like it's if we want to go beyond the superficial in our bhakti, mm-hmm. then it, it can't just be like I follow the rules. Right. Like externally, mm-hmm. I f- we may take great pride or, or satisfaction in that we follow the external rules. But internally, there's another conversation going on in the mind or the heart, you know, what I want, what I wish for, or even what I allow my mind to kind of relish a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and and really what it requires is not just an external fidelity, but like completely internal, that my heart is dead. My heart's for, for God, you know, entirely. You know, that, that we, we have, that's, that's actually the divine love that we're looking for. So I, the way that she phrased it, I think she really understood it. You know, I think that was where she was at. You know, I'll, I'll say it again. She says, um, and then the way she ended it too was nice. So have your heart always turned toward the divine, right? My eyes, my ears may be turned towards the external mm-hmm. service. My heart's always turned towards the divine. Find pleasure in him and not in all that is present and distracting before you. And then it is not exterior silence that makes Now, I like this one. You know I like, like this that, right? part of it. You know why? Yeah. I don't because this is thank you. Mm-hmm. You are too. The Bombay okay. girls are really Gabby. I'm very Gabby. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't oh, I necessarily make you bad, evil, or not a spiritual person. Right. Mm-hmm. If you could be silent and, and, and you might appear very 
thoughtful and introspective, but you can be deeply angry, deeply, cr- deeply critical, de- deep, deeply resentful. Mm-hmm. So it's not just the silly, silence. silly, silly. It could be Mentally internally silly. 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 <laughs> you know, in, in your mind, you could be throwing pies in people's faces. You could be externally incredibly <laughs> silly and internally incredibly sober. I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in the in that way and and at the same time yes you're right yes so yeah yes so, so so again so it's not ex it's not exterior silence that makes the monk but the silence of the heart right mm-hmm. what where where my heart is not gabbing with or taking in right maybe like the silence it's, it's not, the silence of the desires of the heart yeah. or desiring the association no, there's a desire for the association with with materialism. Yeah, you know that that I think we're all sort of working on, and some are sort of like like more treacherous forms of materialism, and some are more subtle forms. But yes, somehow we have to get to that point. It's challenged enough for us because we do we are products of the decadent society. I know. You it, know, it's 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 hard enough for us to get the. I know. I haven't said it yet. How do you know? No, but I know. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You don't understand. I've got all this stuff going in my head on a regular basis. I'm going to say it anyway, Very if you don't mind. Days. Please. Okay. Because not everybody may be as in tuned in as you are. Listen, <laughs> okay. this is a message for you. Listen. Okay. To- so it's challenged enough for us to get our external behavior harmonious with with bhakti, right? It's it's an it's a challenge enough for us to 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 to, to get our external behavior in line with where 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 a, a real yogi how a real yogi how a real bhakti yogi mm-hmm. behaves that's challenging enough but somehow we got to get to the point where if you turned us inside out everything on the inside is also entirely harmonious mm-hmm. everything every mm-hmm. thought you know every uh, all, all of that every internal dialogue right mm-hmm. every desire that's 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 the transformation that's the real transformation right the external thing you know that's wonderful, but it's kind of just the beginning. And then it becomes this lifetime project to get that internal entirely there, you know. Yeah. But that's exciting stuff though, I think. You know, that's 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 the that's the the rocket off project. <laughs> Everybody's project. Okay. Right. That was very good. Good nice nugget. Theodora good. of Alexandria. Nice. I'll share the whole story with you. I'll send it over to you. I think you like it. I wonder if, like, in a thousand years, it'll be Kostuba of New York City. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> Roganath of. He was a woman. Roganath didn't even know he was a woman <laughs> <laughs> until his death. <laughs> he did try to emasculate him on the show quite a few times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Krishna. You know you're you know you're getting really serious about your spiritual life when you when you go oh Krishna, uh, Krishna. all right do we have okay. time for the Bhagavatam this is all Bhagavatam yeah. of course all right hit it Om no Narayanam Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiba Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tatojayam Mudirayat before we started the Shrimad Bhagavatam which is our very means of conquest one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Narayan Ryan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadev, the author. Nasta Prayesha Badreshu Necham Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki by regular attendance and classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tazmai Shri Gurube Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance and my teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. You know, we almost sounded like the, uh, what's her name? Lakshmi Subrabatam Subramaniam. The ones who go, oh my God, that's yeah. What are those Indian ladies called? Those old Indian ladies? Ms. Shubalakshmi. Ms. Shubalakshmi. <laughs> yeah, we sounded just we sounded just like the the 
the world's greatest Carnatic singer. <laughs> uh, I'm sure all over South India they're mistaking <laughs> our our chanting <laughs> for hers. <laughs> they're confused. Was that? I thought. I thought she passed away. No, no, no. She passed away years ago. She was what a talent. What a talent, huh? You know what her breakthrough role was? Ganga Stotram. She uh she played Mirabai in a movie like back in the thirties or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That was her big breakthrough, I think. And she just recorded everything. She just went out for years and years and years. Like she was Google people number her name one on the message board. Write her name write her thing. She was like thought. dominant, like like Bob Marley is to reggae, you know, like you're gonna really compare it to Bob Marley in the sense that that you Bob know Marley probably smoked so much pot in the size of oh, his room. Just judging him from the externals, rubbing him. <laughs> I know, but I don't want to put him up there with her. No, no. My point She's was, like if you ask anyone who's the greatest reggae musician of all time, Bob Marley. Everybody's but... gonna say that. So that's my point. If like, you like, ask, I want to say like, who's the who's the greatest like uh, gangster rapper? Okay, well, she's what to gangster rap. You could do that too. You could do that too. But my point was, it's she's practically unanimously, you know, accepted as like the greatest Carnatic singer of all time. Okay, let's just say that. That's good enough. Don't compare to gangster rap. I didn't. (laughs) All right, let's just leave it there. Jim Wood. Everybody, here comes everybody on the message board in defense of Bob Marley. You see, Bob Marley helped me in my spiritual life, (laughs) Rogan. Everybody likes Bob Marley. Everyone loves Bob Marley. Everybody loves marijuana. Go on. Yeah, Lord Shiva smoked it too, you know. Or maybe not. I don't know. But anyway. Okay, you ready? Okay. Where are we at? Where are we at? Chapter one. Canto seven. Text seven. Text seven. So um what's going on now again? It's been a while. Jim Wood is losing his marbles on the message board. Like, yeah. He's, he's be like, kind. He's starting Bob. like a protest now. Like a, <laughs> all the Washington all the listeners TV. are leaving. They're all leaving. <laughs> <laughs> You've been canceled. <laughs> oh my god. Down with Raga. Raga up with Bob. You just got kicked off of I just You just got kicked off of Zoom. Just... Okay. <laughs> up with Bob. <laughs> All right, so we're we're oh yeah, this is a question. Public statement tomorrow. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I... I don't know what I was thinking. Bob Marley is a great contributor to the musical. And gangster rap is a gangster very valuable very contribution to society. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. Okay. So, so uh, the question was asked. Maraj Parikit is asking um, Shukadev Goswami, is it that it seems like, could it be? It doesn't make any sense that Lord Vishnu is partial. It seems like he's kind to the demigods and not so kind to the demons. That's the question. How could God chapter. like some and not like others? How is God... Playing favorites. Yeah. Hmm? Okay. Text eight. Text seven. My dear King Prickett, the material qualities, Sattvaguna, Rajaguna, and Tamaguna, all belong to the material world and not even a touch, and do not even touch the Supreme Personality of Godhead. These three gunas cannot act by increasing or decreasing simultaneously. Did just read the next and it'll okay. When the quality of goodness is prominent, the sages and demigods flourish with the help of that quality, mm-hmm. with, with with which they are infused and surcharged by the supreme lord. Similarly, when the mode of passion, right, rajaguna, is prominent, the demons flourish. Mm. Interesting, huh? And when ignorance is prominent, uh oh, yakshas, the yakshas and rakshasas flourish. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is present in everyone's heart, fostering the reactions of Sattvaguna, Rajaguna, and Tamaguna. Okay. Very interesting, huh? So so this is here's like the arguments being put forward, right? First we heard that Krishna's above the laws that influence people in this world, that they're actually his energies. So it's those it's the influence of those energies that cause us to like one and not like another. Mm-hmm. So since not only is he beyond those energies, but they're actually his energies. So it would be wrong to think that he falls under under that kind of control like we do. Mm. And now it's saying that just step back and look at it. You're, you're, you're miscalculating the whole thing. It seems like he's picking a favorite here, you know, bringing this one up, bringing that one down. 
saying it's not like that. It's it's kind of like how people respond to those energies that they they'll they'll flourish when that energy is prominent, and then they won't flourish when that energy is not prominent. So it's kind of like if we were to say, like some plants flourish with a lot of sunlight right analogy. okay now i haven't said it yet but yeah but i know where you know <laughs> we're connected we're connected okay so some some plants flourish like in like a arid desert environment yeah. cactus. succulents cactus yeah, succulents and then other plants you know they they do well in a more tropical environment some like shade some like a lot of some grow in shade. the water some grow in shade some grow in water yeah so if you know, if you have like a arid kind of circumstance and you're saying, why is God being favorable to mm -hmm. these particular plants? It's not like those plants respond well to that environment. Mm -hmm. And if, if and when the environment changes, then other plants will thrive and the plant that's thriving now won't thrive. So similarly, it seems like, oh, the Davids are going up, the demons are going down. Saying, well, that's because a certain mode became prominent. You know, okay, the playing the demon's advocate, sir. Yes. It is seen that the personality of Godhead does appear by the petitioning of the demigods to go down and, you know. Yeah, but the demons don't petition him. You're saying the demons would petition him? If the demons petitioned him in the same way that the Davids do, he would. It's how they're responding. Gotcha. Okay. Right? Take that. Yeah, that work? It works. Okay. When the quality, but, but but what? But the question that you're bringing up, Raghunath, you're, yeah. you're almost thinking like Mars Perkett. Yeah, it's going to go there. It's going to go. He's going to begin to to speak about it's good to know a particular that. demon is going to get brought up, and then, and then it's going to go to a conversation between Narda and Yudhishthira, and that conversation that's going to begin soon is going to go for the entire seventh canto. Okay. But the but the origin of that com where, where that conversation starts is Shishapal. We saw that demon. He just hated Krishna. And yet still, we saw that when Krishna killed him, it's not like he went to some dark, dirty dungeon, hell. Right. He merged into the body of Krishna like, liberated. like a liberated yogi might. Mm. How did someone that was so obsessed with hatred towards Krishna, how did he get blessed like that? And so yeah. that 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 question becomes very uh, revealing. Okay, so let's mm -hmm. let's move on with this and see if I actually am thinking like Maharaj Prakash. Not sure, we'll get there today. The all-pervading personality of Godhead exists within the heart of every living being. Yes, and an expert thinker can perceive how he is present there to a large and small or small extent, okay. just as one can understand the supply of fire and wood, water in a water pot or the sky within a pot. One can understand, it just mean like air in a pot? Yeah. Air in a pot. One can understand whether a living entity is a demon or a demigod by understanding that living entities devotional... Devotional performances. By their devotional performances. A thoughtful man can understand how much a person is favored by the Supreme Lord by seeing his actions. Okay. okay. Text 10. And the spirit personality of Godhead creates different types of bodies, offering a particular body to each living entity according to his character and fruit of actions. The Lord revives all the qualities of the material nature, sattva guna, raja guna, and tamoguna. Then, as the super soul, he enters into each body and influences the qualities of creation, maintenance, and annihilation using sattva guna for maintenance, raja guna for creation, and tama guna for annihilation. Okay, so this is how our material bodies work. Mm. Due to our karma, we enter into a particular body. That particular body has a certain amount of, a certain combination of these gunas. Is that funny? It's a little, well, you know what it brought, I made this uh, very scientific explanation of uh, the, the, the famous old question, the, during this morning's song, what came first, the chicken or the egg? And humans have pondered this. Well, the chicken obviously came first, uh, uh, but where did the chicken come from? Well, it came from the egg. Well, where did the egg come from? It came from the chicken. And humans have been scratching their head for millennia over this. We said, we've solved the problem right here. It came from Lord Brahma. And Lord Brahma just started going, doo, 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 start laying eggs, basically. That's how it happened. 
remember that thing about silliness that we heard <laughs> just might want to meditate on, on theodora's instruction to her son it just something I, I said something where i was like acting out brahma laying eggs and it was just yeah. got me internally giggly yes okay let us keep going and then we said okay if that's a crazy story how about everything came from nothing how's that for crazy might be crazy, not silly, though. I'm saying Lord Brahma giving birth to mm -hmm. eggs. It doesn't have to be silly. Okay. But I thought about it, and it was sort of funny. Okay. Okay? Yeah. yeah. It's just a, it's a funnier <laughs> concept to picture a four-headed man just laying eggs. I understood <laughs> the, the subtleties. <laughs> <laughs> it's, come on. Okay, let's read the next question. Okay. All right, here we go. 11. O oh, great king, the supreme personality of Godhead, the controller of the material and spiritual en spiritual energies, who is certainly the creator of the entire cosmos, creates the time factor to allow the material energy and the living entity to act within the limits of time. Okay. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Where do you, where you hear this? Anywhere else? I don't know of any other places you're aware of this kind of thing. Thus, the supreme personality is never under the time factor, nor under the material energy. Like if I was a Christian and I stumbled upon this book, I was like, oh, my God, this is so interesting. That's what I would. It could be. This is so some, interesting. Some do see it that way. Point. But a lot would not open their mind to it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, King, this time factor enhances the Sattva Guna. Time factor enhances that Laguna. Interesting. Patience may have. You okay, know. let's let's hear. Thus, although the Supreme Lord is the controller, he favors the demigods who are mostly situated in Satvaguna. The demons who are influenced by Tamaguna are annihilated. The Supreme Lord induces the time factor to act in different ways, but he never is partial. Rather, his activities are glorious, and he therefore is called Urushrava. It means like one who's widely glorified, I believe. Uru Shrava. Formerly. Whose glories are widespread. Good job. I'm that mm -hmm. little Sanskrit pundit. Okay. Now we're going to hear the question. O King. Formerly O King. Formerly O King. When Maharaj Yudhisthira. Who's that? Maharaj Yudhisthira is Arjuna's older brother. Yeah. Right? He's the eldest of the Pandavas. He was born of Kunti and... Dharma or Yama. Yamarash. Mm -hmm. Isn't that that's pretty interesting? Human woman makes love to a god. Yeah. Gives birth to a celestial child. Yeah. It's very like a mutt, sort of half celestial child, half yeah. human. Okay. That's pretty <laughs> very have, interesting. You don't have to use that term. What? Make love or mutt? Mutt. Oh, well. But anyway. Yeah. Let's keep going. Okay. I mean like that. I just meant. I don't think you'd say to his face. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't say mud, but you know what I meant. He's a crossbreed. Yeah. You call it crossbreed. He's half god. Breed. Say he's half god. Half god. He's half, That's he's nice half a god. He's like half god. Interesting, huh? But then they had tact kids. When you they had kids, you know, huh? A little tact. So <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Ready? I wonder if any of us have gods in our family tree. I'm serious. We all do. You have higher chances because you're from. What's your gotra? What's your gotra? Ooh, oh, they are from the from the Gotham gotra. Well, we also do too, because you know our gotra. Yeah, but that's not. A you know our gotra. Yeah. Chuta Chuta Gotra. Gotra. We're in Krishna's Gotra. We're all in Krishna's Gotra. So, yeah. and we all come from Lord Brahma, too. Yeah, we're all related. Isn't that weird. <laughs> come on. <laughs> you going to read this question or not? Sure. Thank you. It's important mm -hmm. to read the Bhagavatam and contemplate the Bhagavatam, Kostuba. Free with a silliness filter, like <laughs> filter. <laughs> 
Continuing on. Let's start it again. Formerly O King, when Maharaj Yudhisthira was performing the Rajasuya sacrifice. What was that? It was a big religious. It was a big religious function, where they invited all the smaller kingdoms, sending representatives who gave some type of tax to the emperor, and it was sort of declaring Maharaj Yudhisthira to be the emperor and to also give worship to Krishna. That's yeah. what Prabhupada says in the Krishna book. It was actually to give worship to Krishna. It was giving worship to Krishna. I suppose the idea, in a simple way, is that they had this recognition of how the devas work, how the universe works. And if the king could pull together enough influence to make this ritual happen, that the effort that he would put into that would bring I don't know, prosperity or, you know, um, it would bring good to the kingdom, right? Yeah. So so he's he's kind of, as a king, he's like, I need to figure out a way to pull off this ritual. Right? Sure. And in order to do that, I'm going to need, I need to have such influence that every other king is going to recognize I'm the emperor. Mm. And then we'll get them all to invest in this, and then we'll perform this ritual. So it wasn't an easy thing to do. It's kind of, it's the rare emperor that can pull this kind of thing off. Trivia he was, question. Trivia question. Yeah. What name? So Arjuna went to collect taxes from the other kingdoms okay okay yeah and so uh they and and when he did that he arjuna got a special name what name was that dun and jai okay all right dun and jai there's also the well there's also the story in the navadita mahatmya who was it that refused to pay the tax because he wanted to see he, I think he he wanted to see the Pandavas, or he wanted to fight the Pandavas so intensely that Krishna would have to appear to protect them. Hmm. Who was it? You can't start a story. For some reason, I want to say end. Buggy Ratta, but I, I, that's probably not. But Buggy Ratta's a good guy. Well, no, this was a good person. This was a person that wanted to see Krishna so much mm -hmm. that he fought the Pandavas for the... It'd be missing. Okay. Our audience was, okay. of 15,000 did not hear that, so you might want to repeat it. So he said that this king, because he was so eager to see Krishna, he knew, let me fight Bhima Sen, who's the most ferocious warrior. Let me fight him with such ferocity of my own that he put him in a compromised position, uh, that he was he was in danger. And so then Krishna did appear, and then he bowed down, surrendered to Krishna, and had gladly paid the tax. Because he respected Yudhishthira. Mm. Okay, are we out of time, Mary? Is that what you're doing? Almost out okay. of time. All right. So why don't we just pick up with this first tomorrow? Okay. But it's gonna it, it's gonna get exciting now because this question of the demon Shishupal is gonna come up. We can look into that pastime and maybe tell more about it. But that's gonna become the question: Why did Shishupal get the result that he got when it seemed like he just hated Krishna so much? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, Miss Mara, what, what little notes did you take here? Why don't you your face on the screen here? What you got? Have your heart always turned towards the divine. Mm -hmm. Nice. Right. Silence the mind and focus on God. What if God was one of us? <laughs> That's a good song. Like, what if he was one of us? Contemplate the Bhagavatam without never liked the song, and I like it even less now. Yeah, the silly like <laughs> a bhakti okay. yoga, a bhakti yogi needs to guard their heart to give it to Krishna. There you go. Keep a snow globe around you and be in it, but not of it. Be in the snow globe, people, but not of it. God is never partial. Never partial. You to steer isn't a mutt. He's a half god. Thank you. Let's Thank be you, respect yeah. here. I, lo I love you to steer. He's one of my favorites. Okay. And, and forgive Elvis Costello and move on. Yes. There you go. And you did it today, Ragnar. You let it go. let it go. You sound a little bitter before. It was a little hurt. It was a little hurt. I'll just say. Um, yeah, I want to thank everybody, including uh, the Wolverine. Jackman. Really nice guy. Very nice guy. 
hanging out with him. There was a kid from playing. Didn't know he was. Look at everybody here. We got the whole crew live live. We got people people praising Haley Selassie on the... (laughs) There's a... There's a pro Bob Marley protest going on at the White House right now. And they've got an effigy of me and they're hitting me with sticks. Don't ever go to Jamaica. All right. Don't ever go to Jamaica. Don't ever go to Jamaica. Oh my god, everybody online is lighting up over here. <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining us. We're having an incredible time with the Eco Village. And we're gonna try to oh every morning, I don't you're not gonna be up for this, but we do a live. What time would that be? We do it at 5.30 a.m. You're staying up Eastern time, that would be. Figure that out because I'm doing my 6 p.m. Am I doing my thing? I'm doing it at 5.30 a.m. Oh, at 6 p.m. every night I'm doing Eastern time. I'm doing my satsang in the morning if you want to tune into that. Oh, wow. Yeah, they scratch I have to do it live. Lee Scratch Perry. Scratch Perry. Who's Lee Scratch Perry? He was a reggae producer. Okay. He did. He also worked with The Clash. A lot of he's real wild. Perry. Okay. Kind of talking about that. Yeah. The reggae. Perfect. 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 me all these private messages. No, Rugby. It's, it's, it's a good analogy. Dude. Not about the weed. It was writing novels and dissertations. I love you, Tim Wood. Forgive me. Gotta move it slow. Come on, Bombay. Bring it up higher angle. You got Laura from Chicago. Now zoom in on people. Gaia. Australia in the house. Wondering if you need in the bed here. <laughs> no, we got we got basically three quarters of the Maya Boris here. Got Bali and Krishna Kishore. That would be two thirds. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, we gotta be seated. Maharaj is giving class tonight. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We got a big crew. Love to you all. It's a beautiful day, beautiful day. Join us for the satsang at 6 p.m. on my Instagram. And it's a beautiful day, a beautiful day. Let the magic continue to flow. That's you guys. Hi, Rich. Hi, Rich. First time. Bye. <laughs>